are now live with the 48 Week Photography Challenge critique for week six. We had several photos submitted for the sunset theme. Uh, I've chosen one from just about everyone that uh, had a chance to, to join. Oh, looks like I got Andrew in here too. Um, Please run XSplit Broadcaster. I don't know what that is. Um, I think that might actually be a spammer. <laughs> um, if they don't say anything anytime soon, I'm just going to quick cut them off. Um, all right, so um, basically, we're going to go through these photos and give a critique. You guys are more than welcome to chime in, give you guys his input. Um, Adam, since your name starts with A, we always start with you first. So let's go ahead and screen share this up. All right, can you guys confirm that you see my screen? Yep. Perfect. All right. So I think I'm going to boot this Andrew Perry guy, or just get rid of his video at least. Um, all right. <clears throat> so this is Adam's photo, obviously taken at sunset and what looks like... That's a, sunrise, buddy. Sunrise, okay. Oh, yeah, East Coast. That makes sense. So sunrise. What is that thing coming out of the ground? This is over at the uh, North Carolina... Uh, art Museum, they have this installation. It's this triptych of these huge um, circles. I, I don't know what else to call them. Uh, these cement circles that are into the ground. My plan was to go over there and do a shoot through them into the sun, but uh, y though you can't see it in the picture, the whole, all of the ground to the left where the other two giant pieces are is all underground repair with orange fences all over the place, so that uh, kind of ruined everything. No fun. Yeah, so uh, th this is what I ended up with. Fair enough, so let me tear it apart. Um, <laughs> so There's no <laughs> pigeons. You can't tear it apart. There's no pigeons. Um, so obviously you just lost a lot of detail in the shadows, and you know, rightfully so, because you're trying to expose for the sun, and this is what makes you know sunset photos so challenging that I think a lot of people don't understand. Um, you got like, you know, interesting little rim lighting from the, the orange uh, colors here, um, but you know, it's pitch black in the shadows. You have absolutely no detail in the shadows. And the circle, I can see what you're going for, but it's really not that interesting, uh, at least for me. What I think would have made this a much more interesting shot, but could have could blind you, was to pull out your 70 to 200. Um, yeah, or, remember, I was shooting with my D80. I didn't have that option. You could put a 70 to 200. Of the full frame I could have put on? Yeah, your, any lenses will work on the D80. Hmm. I didn't even think to try it. I assumed it didn't, so I didn't bring it. <laughs> yeah, so... You, you didn't um, teach that in the pit class. All right, so <laughs> quick lesson for everyone out there. If you have a crop-censored camera, meaning if you spent less than you know $1,000, less than $1,500 in your camera, your camera is most likely a uh, crop sensor, you can put any lens that fits into it, so that'll mount into it. So any Canon lens for a Canon camera, or any Nikon lens for a Nikon camera. Okay. So, but if you have full frame, that's where you have issues. So if you put a crop sensor lens on a full frame, that's where you get an actual cropped image, and it doesn't look very good. So just kind of a quick lesson there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, my tip would have been to take your zoom lens back way up and make the the circle the frame. Mm and shoot through and um, shoot the, the sun through it and have a super high f-stop. And what that would have created is the compression, so it would, have, it would have brought the sun closer and it would have made it look bigger. And it may or may not have fit the whole circle, but you would have got the clouds, you would have got the, uh, the sky and everything, and you would have got the rich colors of the, the sun and could have made for a much more interesting uh, shot. Yeah, so, I agree. That would have worked. Um, Steve Mocklin said, can I add the host to Skype? I don't know what that means. This is on Google Hangout. Can't do it on Skype. So I don't know what that, um, what that means. So basically, uh, that would have been, I think, would have been an interesting shot using your zoom lens uh, and, you know, shooting a super high f-stop so you get, like, the, the star effect uh, from the sun and everything, the, the rays effect. So that's what I would suggest on yours. Okay. All right, so this one's from Alan. Alan's been pretty much in all the um, competition or challenges so far. He just hasn't been able to make it to critique. I think this photo is really lovely. The colors are, you know, phenomenal here. I'm not a huge fan of the position of the sun. Um, kind of just not in the middle, but kind of in the middle. 
Um, obviously, you can't really move the sun around while still getting the the um, pier and everything in the shot. But I really love the colors. I think the colors came out really beautiful. You got purples, oranges, blues, greens, um, all that kind of stuff in here, turquoise. Uh, so I think the colors came out really nice. The reflection from the sky, really well exposed. The, the touch-up post work that, um, that he did, I'm sure he added some vibrance and everything to kind of make the sky more blue and the oranges more orange. Um, so I think it came out really pretty uh, overall. Uh, he submitted another one that's more of a panoramic, but I ended up going with this one. Um, but yeah, I like the colors. The only thing I would, you know, I, it can't really change much. Uh, I'm trying to think of like how you can change your composition. I think you did the best that you could in terms of the orientation of the sun. But you got to keep in mind when you're composing your photos, a majority of people are drawn either to the closest thing to the camera or the brightest part of the image. Uh, it's not always the case, but it's how it typically is. So me being drawn to the, the center here uh, towards the sun, I'm kind of neglecting like the leading lines of the pier and the sky and everything. I'm usually just drawn straight here. So I know there's probably not much you could have done about that in terms of position of sun while, while still maintaining the composition of this, but nonetheless, I still think it's a good shot. This one's uh, submitted by Claudia out in um, uh, was it Toronto, just outside of Toronto. Uh, not the best place to be for a sunset photo. Uh, I believe she cheated, and I think this was submitted uh, a couple weeks ago because she hadn't seen the sun in a couple weeks. But <laughs> I guess that's how it is out there in uh, um, uh, Toronto. So this one, you know, she captures the sunset. Obviously, she took it with an iPhone and submitted it on Instagram, so it's not the highest quality image. Um, I think she could have done a better job. What was that? Um, hello? Okay, we're going to mute you. Uh, uh, can I mute you? All right, that was unusual. All right, we're just going to... Michael, do you have... Uh, I think your audio's on. Did you have something to say, or are you part of the meetup? Okay, and goodbye. Um, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? Nigga. All right, so we have some inappropriate people in here. I guess that's what we get for. Um, all right. That was lovely. Um, sorry, guys. Interesting group today. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. I don't want that part to be recorded. So, oh, this guy's back. Nigga. Really? They're back. Nigga, 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 nigga. Really? I'm good thing you can block people. Um, ridiculous. Sorry, guys. All right. That's so, gonna be awesome in the, in the post. No, I know. I feel really bad about that. Dude, how's this guy? How do they keep coming back? Nigga, 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 nigga. Oh, look, it's a nigga. Dude, how do they keep? Like, this is like really disturbing. I'm sorry, guys. All right, I'm gonna see if we can just. Not have that guy keep on coming back. Dude, how is I'm blocking you? Sl Dude, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's just try to focus on this. Um, I don't know how I can... I keep telling him to block, but he seems to keep getting in. Um, all right, so... Slay... Sl Nigga, 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 nigga. Okay. So this is Claudia's picture. I think it could be better if it wasn't centered, but I do like the colors, uh, like the reflection and everything. Um, on to uh, Courtney's photo. Um, you know, I, she had two sunset pictures. One was just like a standard sunset, and one was with the, uh, the camera. I chose the camera just because I think it's more interesting composition than just, you know, a sunset uh, only. It just had, like, you know, a plain sunset. So I think this one's a little bit better just in terms of changing it up a little bit, adding foreground to a sunset. This is something that I strongly encourage. Um, you know, people do. Dude, he's back. All right, just have to be quick. Um, <clears throat> so 
what I would suggest here is it looks a little off in terms of tilting, and then one kind of rule, another reason why I brought this up, so I can build up in the critique, don't do this with your camera and your tripod. Don't extend the center tube like this. This is actually a bad idea, uh, especially around water. If you Google uh, Hasselblad falling into water, you will see a very... It's uh, a nigga! Sorry, guys. Um, so with, um, with this, when setting up your tripod, never extend the center tube. It can be a really bad situation for you, especially at the beach, just because um, people, you know, wind can pick up or something like that. It's just super top heavy and can fall over. So I highly dis or do not recommend you doing this. Um, and when you're out shooting and everything like that, just uh, make sure you keep your tripod lower to the ground uh, so it's not so top heavy and not going to risk uh, falling over and. Uh, into the sand or into the water. Composition-wise, uh, the color's nice. It's a silhouette, but um, horizon-centered. Uh, I think if she lowered her camera down, backed away, and kind of got lower to the ground and shot up with the camera more into the sky, it could have been a better shot. Uh, just horizon-centered type thing, and you know, faulty use of a tripod is quite uh, quite annoying. So I don't recommend uh, doing that. So that's why I wanted to pull up this photo. This one's interesting. I have a friend in Thailand right now who submitted this one. Um, kind of like it. I don't necessarily like the the train. I think it can. It's a little messy, but I definitely love the the soldier, the officer. It looks like here. Um, I'm making that assumption solely based on you know the hat he's wearing. It looks like it could be in the boots. That could be a soldier. Nigga. Dude, that guy is ridiculous. Um, so that's one thing I would recommend with the uh, with this photo is you know wait for the train to get out so it's not like this big you know kind of cluster in the shot. Um, it just kind of deters my attention away from this guy. Then also I would try to pull, I would try to back myself up, go a little bit further to the right to kind of compose him more into the sky so he's not getting lost in over here. And then I try to Photoshop out the the red light here as well. It's kind of distracting. Um, but I see it's got great potential. Um, you know, it's, you definitely tell you're not in San Diego here. I'd also Photoshop this this light out as well. It's kind of distracting, but it, it has potential. But you can also tell how hazy it is in Thailand. Um, not the best foot, uh, conditions. I don't know what are you guys' thoughts on this one. I actually like the red lights. <laughs> Maybe that's mm. just a non-photographer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, yeah, it's, it's it has cool. a little. Um, little dynamic to the picture. Okay. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'd like to see is a little bit more exposure to all that. I mean, to be able to see a little bit more of the train um, and see a little bit more of the, the guard there. I know that you know, I'd, I'd want to keep some of the silhouette, but I'd like to see, I don't know, maybe something, you know, maybe if he was a little bit more to the left. I mean, I, the sun being right in the center is a little bit distracting for me. Um, but I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is maybe move a little to the left and sort of catch the sun, um, you know, right, right on the front, you know, edge of the train, um, and maybe get a little bit more. Well, I guess I see another train there. This thing maybe get a little bit more of the leading line heading out into the distance. Okay. Um, but yeah, I agree that the red lights are kind of unusual. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I, don't know, I, I see some potential for it. I just think um, I like the silhouette. Ah, oh, he's back. It's a fuck. Uh, um, Google Hangout kind of sucks for blocking people. Supposedly you can block people, but it's clearly not working. Um, so again, sorry guys. All right, so yeah, I think uh, adding, I think putting him more in the, uh, keeping him silhouetted and kind of putting him more up in the sky by getting it lower and kind of going to the right a little bit. Could be for an interesting shot, but I like what you're saying as well, Adam. This one I think is really beautiful, really pretty uh, colors and everything. Got some of the greens, the blues, the oranges, and gradient into the red and dark. I um, think it came out really nice, but look at this. A little like helicopter or plane or whatever flying up there. Um, Got to Photoshop that out. That just um, it's a really simple kind of quick tool, just you know, clone out, gone. Uh, just mainly because it's kind of a distraction. But other than that, I think he was down at uh, Cabrillo Monument. Um, 
you know, where all the uh, the grave sites are for uh, military uh, personnel, and you know, it's a beautiful area. If you ever get a chance to kind of go down there, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and he got a really nice. I love the colors in the shot. I think it's great. I think the composition could possibly be a little bit better. I feel it's just too centered for my personal taste. I think he could have, you know, put it off to the the left or yeah, probably the left would have been better. Um, so somewhere right over here, just kind of moving the camera a little bit to compose that uh, can make it for a little bit more interesting of a shot. What do you guys think? And then also photoshopping this little uh, sun flare out. Uh, the only thing I, I'm, I know you like the colors is just a personal. Oh. And Adam's gone. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back. What do you think, Pat uh, Patricia? Um, I I agree that he maybe if he moved the sunset off to the left, it would have made more of a um, an emotional picture, I guess, and maybe bring the um, gravestone a little more in the foreground. Um, other than that, it's a beautiful picture. Yeah. What were you saying, Adam, before you mysteriously left us? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, no, I just, I, it just the red looks over processed to me. It doesn't look natural. Um, mm -hmm. I, the only thing I could think of is maybe you know shoot a shot of the the sky, um, and you know basically combine the two photos, shoot the shot that he has here, and then shoot a shot of the sky because I can only assume it was blue. I mean, I've been out there at that time of morning. I don't remember it looking like red dawn. Um, <laughs> Definitely not what the fences look like out here. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't. I don't recall that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I like everything else to do with the shot. I mean, the, I, I like that he's kept the, the tombstone there. Um, I mean, I agree if you'd left or right justified it, I think it would have been a little bit more interesting. But I like that the, the fact that he kept some of the headstones in the in the foreground um, made it really interesting. And that, it, that it's also, you can read the, the, the writing on there, which looks nice. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so this one's by Debbie. Um, she had another one very similar to this, but it was just like kind of like a snapshot type thing, so I went with this one instead. Um, she's got lots of sun flare into the lens, which you can tell is a big spot here, spot here, spot here, spot here, spot here. Can be what she's going for. Um, just I think this one's kind of ugly right here. Um, even got the carving and the, the stone down here as well in detail. But I liked how the, the water's kind of like shooting out at the camera uh, from hitting the, the rocks and everything, and I like how it's just blurred enough to kind of show the motion. I think that makes it look way interesting than being, you know, a super fast shutter speed. She obviously shot at a much higher f-stop here and, um, uh, you know, get the kind of the star effect from the sun, but also to slow down her shutter speed to kind of get the motion of the water, which I think came out really nice. Um, for me personally, this, this whole part of the photo kind of loses me. Um, she's also got some sensor dust, quite a bit of sensor dust here. Here and here and here and here. So Debbie, make sure you get your sensor clean. You can go down to Georgia's and get your <laughs> sensor clean. <laughs> uh, get thirty percent off when you mention my name. Nice um, PSA. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's got a lot of um, potential here. I just don't really like this part um, up here. Um, okay. Sorry, people were walking in the door. So this one, this is the kind of stuff I don't like. This is uh, from Elisa. Um, I prefer to have some kind of contrast, some kind of foreground, something, uh, a point of interest to kind of draw your attention. My only complaint with this one is there's nothing that really brings your attention. She at least put the sign on the top, uh, the right-hand corner, which I do like, um, but she didn't really do um, much with it in terms of the foreground. There's no like interesting waves. There's no real interesting um, key subject uh, point of interest here that really draws my attention. Kind of curious, what do you guys think? I would like to have seen a little bit more foreground there, um, or maybe let the tide draw out a little bit further. Patty, uh, it's cliche. Yeah, I agree. And then uh, it was Brad. You just joined us. You have uh, any input? It doesn't sound like your audio is working, so we'll just skip it. All right, um, so this one is from Erin. Erin's usually with us, but she didn't make it today. Um, this one I just feel is a little underexposed. 
uh, feel there's could have been a little bit more um, exposure here in the foreground to kind of bring it to life. I just feel it's too much in the shadows. Obviously, I think the sun has set and there's not enough uh, light around. Uh, but uh, I think it's kind of an interesting shot. Kind of looks like you know this old man's got his little like paddle boat that he kind of goes around the harbor in. Uh, but I think there's a lot of kind of interesting detail here and here. So I think you should just kind of either use Photoshop or Lightroom to kind of brush in some uh, some details into the shadows or um, you know, just worked on her exposure here. I think it could have been really brought to life and could have been a little bit more interesting. Um, any other input from you guys? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think if she just used maybe a graduated filter down there on the bottom right-hand corner, she could pull out a lot of detail that could have livened up the photo a little bit and brought a little bit more attention to that. Yeah. yeah. I agree, because it seems like the focal was supposed to be the guy, but it happens to be the bridge. Yeah, so like the bridge kind of kind of leading you around. So what could have been what could have made this better is if she shot at a lower f-stop and uh, blurred out the background, so shooting at like some like two point eight, and then um, and another great way to, that could have worked without having to change aperture would have been to use a flash. So put a flash kind of off to the right uh, with like a softbox or something or an umbrella, and that could have really made this photo pop out a lot. Uh, would be to kind of flash in some detail. Um, that could have really kind of livened it up or brightened it up. But kind of an interesting, unique, like, shot. Like, I don't even know where this is, to be honest. Um, didn't know, like, there was a place like this or a boat like that and a guy like that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> so this one's kind of funny, Tequila Sunrise. <laughs> this, one's from, this one's from James. Uh, we were hoping to get a shot... Uh, during the night in the light class on Sunday night, and the sun didn't come out, so he kind of made his own sunrise, per se. So I thought this was pretty funny. I didn't get it at first. I thought it was just a really bad picture. Um, but it kind of made sense when you throw the tequila and you know, all that stuff, all the different elements of the tequila sunrise, and I got it. Um, you know, Obviously, it's a cell phone picture. It's not of the highest quality. It's not sharp. It's not a great photo, but it's clever. So I'll give him that. Uh, there's a lot of things you could have done to kind of make this photo more compelling, but I do like how he put the light kind of coming through it to kind of bring it all uh, to life as if it was sunset, kind of orangey and stuff, so I can see where it's going. Um, but definitely, I, lo I love how the bottles are almost empty, too. That's, <laughs> that's kind of the funny part as well. But yeah, obviously not a you know professional photo. Uh, coming from Jennifer, so another kind of cliche shot. I do like the the detail in the sun that she was able to pull out. You're able to kind of see the the whole sun, which is not always very common. Um, you know, Photoshop out the little bird flying out. Don't like those little specks. Um, color, I, th I think this one's better, but I still don't think it's a award-winning sunset shot by any means. This one's from uh, um, Joan. So she did great in terms of like waiting for the sun just to kind of peek behind the, the mountain there or the hill and get that, that starburst effect. So for you guys who don't know, if you raise your f-stop to like uh, f8 or f16 or f22 or something like that, this is the kind of effect that you get. And uh, especially when it's kind of being, um, you know, cut by something. So when the sun's being, you know, uh, cut by either... Uh, uh, I'm sure you guys see this picture all the time, like a couple kissing, and there's like the sun's first between the lips and stuff. If the sun's not directly just out in the sky, it's very easy to kind of get these kind of effects. So if there's like a situation where it's kind of going behind the mountain or going behind something, uh, you can get a much better uh, starburst effect. Uh, other than that, the photo itself is not that interesting. Um, so, um, you know, there's other ways to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. That was interesting, um, that Brett guy who was just awkwardly <laughs> laying on his bed. I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> just failed. Um, I think the photo could be uh, better uh, and more interesting uh, just because, like, or it's, there's actually not much potential. It's just because this area is not very compelling by any means. It doesn't really draw my attention too much. But, um, you know, she also got sensor dust over here. So you can kind of see some sensor dust in the shot, so keep an eye on that. But I do like the orientation when she cropped it. You know, she went with kind of the panoramic look, which makes it a little bit more interesting, I think. 
uh, versus if you didn't crop it, we just have all this extra unnecessary space that would lose your focus. So I think by cropping it this way, she made it a little bit more compelling. This is uh, Juanita's. I thought I chose a different one, but um, so again, I mean, you can kind of see like the sun ray sort of coming through the uh, the clouds there, but again, nothing really that jumps out at me and screams amazing. Um, I think if she actually zoomed out a little bit more and got the edges of the cloud versus cutting off the clouds, it could have been a little bit more interesting, I feel. Um, and then also, again, like just silhouetting the mountain. She did good by having the mountain in the bottom a third, um, but still, it's just kind of like, you know, useless space. There's not a lot of interesting details. There's maybe more like divots and valleys and like kind of interesting stuff in the foreground versus just kind of being flat like this and a little bumpy. I think it could have been a little bit better. This one I thought was pretty cool. Um, this looks like kind of on the shipyard uh, by the bay. Just the crazy deep dark clouds, um, which is kind of what we had in the last couple of days. So it looks like she just got at the right time, right spot, right location, everything. Um, you know, I think this one came out really well from Arlene. Um, it, I'm trying to debate if I think it would be better with a little bit more detail in the ships and the, the foreground and everything, um, or if, you know, keep it all the same type thing. But uh, I think it just came out pretty cool. I liked how the sun's up in the top left-hand corner. The sky's blacked out uh, from the deep, dark uh, kind of storm clouds we've had recently. And I don't know. I think it came out pretty interesting. I like the reflection from the sun. The only thing that bothers me is this, this building. I think if that building was photoshopped out and just orange right here, I think it would be much cooler. That way you can only focus on here in the sun. I like the smoke coming out across from the, uh, the shipyard or wherever that's coming from. I think that's kind of cool. What are your guys' thoughts on this one? I, I really like this shot. Um, I, I agree with you on the building. Is this is this San Diego? Is that that's Coronado Bridge, I'm pretty sure. What building is that? Uh, it's. I think it's she's shooting from Coronado. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I think that's like a housing building. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like the smoke coming up in the background. I think that's sort of interesting with the. Uh, the factories back there, um, but I, I like the silhouettes with the ship. I, I don't know that I'd want to see more detail in that as compared to that that one from Thailand that you were talking about. I think the, sil the silhouettes just look a little bit more interesting, I guess. Very good. Patty? That's a good shot. I like it. All right, Patty. How are you? So, um, I'll try to be nice since this is your first time. Um, but a couple things That's here. That's not one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. Um, the other ones, I, I feel. Actually, I, I thought I chose the the other one. I think I kind of messed up on a few. <laughs> There's actually one I was hoping you would comment on. Maybe I should just have submitted that one. But this one. Yeah, that one. Okay. So I'll make an exception for you. So. <laughs> Since you actually showed up, you might as well be rewarded. Uh, so what we got going on here is, one, you kind of didn't get the whole log in there. It's just kind of like a log in the way type okay. thing. Um, you know, it just kind of goes all the way across the scene and it doesn't really stand out, doesn't make it um, too compelling. Okay. Um, I do kind of like the colors of the, this, the top tree line and everything. I think that's kind of interesting. But you have no detail or color in the sky at all. Right. So this is a situation where you have really dark foreground and really bright, or so dark, dark shadows, bright, bright highlights. So you have a substantial, too much contrast that your camera can't handle it. Okay. So this is where you do something like HDR. So you do like one exposure for the highlights, one exposure for the mid, uh, mid tones, and then you do one exposure for the, the shadows. And then you oh. kind of put them all together. So it's known as high dynamic range. So you might want to. Google it or look up some YouTube videos on how to do it, and okay. um, that would be able to kind of capture the full range of the shot. Now, composition's the other side of this. There's not much composition. You do not emphasize anything in particular other than like the log itself and the trees and like the, the highlight on the trees. So there's nothing that really grabs my attention. Okay. Um, so 
<clears throat> I kind of like the, the spotted um, bits of snow. It was actually kind of funny. I saw a van today that had a bunch of snow on top of it, like down here, <laughs> which doesn't happen very often. But I came from Laguna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, it's kind of soft and fuzzy too. It doesn't look that sharp. Uh, looks like you kind of shot it at a wide open aperture. Um, Mainly because the the tree the the log sharp, but the trees are kind of soft, and it's kind of more of a landscape shot. So mm -hmm. I would assume to shoot at a higher f stop, you'd have even sharper focus. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's I, I can't really see much in this shot that would give an opportunity for an interesting photograph. Um, yep. You know, the colors just at the top of the tree and everything are interesting, but other than that, I just don't see other opportunities uh, in this particular location. What about you, oh. uh, uh, Adam? If I were to, um, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. If I were to just, because what got me about this was the color in the trees. If I were just to focus on, let's say, the trees and make them more clear, do you think that would make a more interesting picture? So what I would do is I'd probably shoot vertical and zoom in on one of the trees, probably actually from your your current position, mm -hmm. and just zoom in to get just a little bit, like so, basically zoom in from like, you know, kind of crop in from like here to okay. here. Type thing, mm -hmm. and try to get try to pull in detail into the sky. So if you had like the greens to orange to blues, it would kind of make for an interesting shot in terms of colors. Oh. All right. It's still probably wouldn't be super interesting just because it's trees, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, it would have more potential than what this is. Okay. What do you think, Adam? I, I was actually going to say the same thing. I was just going to say if you had stepped in front of that log there um, and been able, because I would have liked to have seen some foreground. I actually like the. The dry grass there um, is something just a, a contrast of color, um, and done that shot that Jason was talking about. Or I don't know if it was possible if you actually stepped into the woods there and shot straight up, maybe through the trees, catching some of the contrast and the sunlight coming across, or maybe through the trees at that point could have been interesting as well. Okay, I agree. I'll give that a try. And then we're gonna. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, Saskia's. This is one of hers. Um, I kind of like the this silhouette of the. It looks like father and daughter here. I don't like this silhouette of CV. I don't know why people think San Diego beaches are like the most beautiful beaches. I think we have the ugliest beaches in the world. Uh, <laughs> oh, CV everywhere. Disgusting. Um, but I kind of like how the clouds came together. For some reason, I feel it's the horizon's not perfectly straight or kind of like bows or something like that. I don't know. I just have a disconnect with the horizon there. But uh, kind of like the, the, the just what's going on, the chaos of the sunlight coming through these clouds here. I think that came out pretty cool. Um, kind of like the reflection off the water here. And I do like the silhouette. I feel, um, feel maybe if he stepped out maybe a foot or two more could have been emphasized. The silhouette could have been emphasized a little bit more. Or maybe he actually stepped out to the water and we kind of got rid of this foreground, this kind of just dead shadow area. Um, that way, the contrast between the, the silhouette and um, the reflection off the water could have been much greater. So that that's probably what I would have changed here. What would you guys say? I think I just would have gotten lower. I mean, I, I, if I see a silhouette like that, I mean, maybe catch them, you know, left justify the the sunset and catch the the, the dad and uh, you know, boy or girl there, you know, within the actual sun and get the silhouette there and you know, a little bit of the ocean. I just think all the beach there. I don't know. Just it's distracting. Doesn't make it very interesting. Yeah, the beach kind of um, it. So, kind of a tip in terms of composition. Um, so Adam says get lower. Um, this is a great technique where you can tell your subject to move out closer to the water. You can zoom in. So you stay where you are and you zoom in with like a two hundred millimeter lens or something, and you can shoot at. You guys hear that? Sorry, we got someone running in the studio right now that causing quite a bit of noise. Um, we'll wrap up in just a sec. But if you zoom in, and that way you can kind of compress the background, you can blur it out, but still have the details and everything, and make the the silhouette stand out a lot more, and have that contrast between the the sky and the reflection of the water, and make for a much more interesting shot. This one's uh, from Savannah. Uh, I think they're friends. I think they're actually out on the same day. Um, I'm not sure though. I think they um, came to one of the events we had. But here, the dogs are blurry. So that's obviously one of the first uh, mistakes here is the dogs aren't sharp in focus. Um, 
I think if the dogs were a little bit closer to the water, you get a little bit more of the reflection. Right here, I think that if they got the reflection in the shot, it would have made a much more interesting shot. Um, so this one has potential. It's just a boring sunset without the dogs. But being that the dogs are totally blurred out, um, I don't really like it that much. So really, the only options here are to somehow get the dogs closer to the water. It's not always the easiest thing to do. But if we we're in a perfect world, that's what would be better. So if they're right along the edge of the water, you get a little bit lower, kind of angle your camera up just a hair more, uh, can make for an interesting, more interesting shot. But the big issue here is just the, you know, the dogs are blurry. I don't know what you guys' feedback. I mean, I think you've got the dogs there. I think it just, you know, talking about composition, you know, have them on the left side. I mean, I think I would have taken the shot from maybe to the, to the left a little bit and left, left it more open where they're kind of going down the beach and you're getting the sun in the background there. Um, this just looks more like a like a vacation Polaroid to me, like the dogs are having fun at the beach. Um, but I think to make it more interesting, there, there could have been some lines, you know, going down the beach with the sunset, you know, off to the left in the background and, mm -hmm. you know, getting to see where the dogs were going towards. I agree. Very good. All right. Well, um, I think that's the last one, yeah. So that pretty much wraps up the, the critique. I want to thank you two for participating. Uh, we had some other participants in today's uh, critique. I, do I thought they were the best. On their really. behalf, uh, for not... they, yeah, they definitely have the most value, right? Um, <laughs> so again, my, my apologies for that, uh, for those that are watching the recording. Hopefully people don't want the whole recording into that part. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming out. So we're going to go ahead and uh, shut down the broadcast. And hopefully we'll see you guys for next week's uh, critique, which will be uh, for this week, which is contrast. So week seven, we're on contrast. So if you haven't checked out the video already, check out the video at jason kirbycom And I'll see you guys in the next critique. Thanks. Bye. All right. All right, see you guys later. <laughs>